Hello everyone. This is Monday Live Session 2 to speak about uh, this era of AI and human intelligence. What's the threat? Why do we consider that there is a threat to human intelligence? I'd like to also answer your questions, try to read all your messages. Welcome to Dr. Zelena's Change Academy. We'll start talking about IQ, intelligence quotient, and EQ, emotional quotient, or what we know as emotional intelligence. EQ evaluates self-awareness, management of emotions, and interpersonal skills. Both are critical, both complete each other and needed for our well-being, success, and development we're going to see dynamic relationship between IDEC today and in the future. My target is to develop both sides and see what's going on in this AI revolution and the era of high tech. Some qualities of AI really imitate what we know because it's beyond human intelligence. Uh, the intelligence represented by artificial intelligence is surpassing human levels. It's simple reality. We see it. Luckily, AI still needs us. It generates thoughts and emotions and it can be really independent entity thinking and responding, studying our facial expressions, our emotions, our words, and giving us instantly responses without being tired. So an AI agent doesn't sleep, doesn't fall ill, it doesn't have emotions, it doesn't need emotional regulation. It's performing higher than a human being. Now, when we go to the algorithms, they go faster. The combinations are higher than the average human being capacity and the responses can be really developed. We cannot see any discussion or debate nowadays about the supremacy of some AI apps to human performance. So the question is, how can we survive this? How are we threatened? Our jobs, our being? Is it going to be a sci-fi movie? Some videos are a little bit apocalyptic and say that robots can kill us one day. The narrative is around how they will realize that they're destroying the environment or making wars and might recognize that human beings have many issues in managing the world. We can see some truth in this, but I don't think it's apocalyptic at the moment. What we know is that AI is more advanced than humans. It, it doesn't have our limits. We want to have this hybrid performance. We use AI to reach higher levels of, which is the cognitive ability, reasoning, memory, pattern recognition. IQ remains a strong, predictor of academic performance uh, and certain professional tasks. Emotional intelligence, however, has been overwhelmingly disregarded in the late at least 20 years in professions, in schools. There is less focus on the humanistic studies and more and more towards business, towards science, of course, science, uh, it's a century of uh, science. We, as human beings, try to explain the world and phenomena. Science is one that reached higher levels of empirical and experimental levels. Okay. So emotional intelligence encompasses the ability to perceive, understand, regulate one's own and others' emotions. So when I first had, I remember maybe six years ago, one of my first speeches about the EQ, emotional intelligence, one of my senior colleagues said, 
that's a womanly thing, being emotional or vulnerable. I had to think about vulnerability as not a weakness, but a human authentic emotion. Uh, this happened in the past and I had to explain that it is an intelligent way of managing emotions. We cannot deny that emotion is part of the human being. It's a red flag. If you don't recognize them, they will come back to you in different forms. Burnouts, exhaustions, stress management. So that's what we do with EQ, manage emotions in our favor. Our organizations, Barclays and Alibaba, assess EQ alongside IQ in hiring. I do that in my hiring. Recognizing that empathy and self-regulation foster teamwork and innovation. Balanced development, cognitive skills building and social emotional learning yields the most adaptable individuals in volatile environments. Sometimes environments are hectic, high stress, and we need to measure our emotions, manage them, not suppress them. That's the most important idea. We don't suppress emotions, we manage them. I had many questions, many trainings about how to manage emotions and not suppress them. Intelligence, as in IQ, uh, performance, analytical reasoning, pattern recognition and memory um, is now threatened by AI. This is the AI era. It's surpassing our levels of IQ in everything. So what we're thinking about is how to create this hybrid human AI model. Despite many threats, for example, AI becomes more ingrained in education. Future generations may lack the capacity to engage in deeper intellectual work. Some students don't know how to summarize a text because they use AI in everything. Also, another idea about the threats, AI is threatening our social, emotional learning framework. Johns Hopkins research found AI models significantly underperform humans in reading social cues from video, highlighting AI's limits in interpreting relational dynamics. Some research indicated that these facial recognitions and reading emotions failed many times, mainly with people with different features or skin colors, sometimes passionate people like me, passionate about topics and everything. AI can interpret that emotion as anger. So still, in emotion side, AI has some problems, but it doesn't mean that AI is not reading emotions. We need to use a hybrid human AI model to create this balance. Leveraging AI's data horsepower while relying on human EQ to steer decisions ethically and compassionately. We need to make these decisions balancing what we can reach by this AI model and the human capacity of reading emotions and working with emotions. This ensures we retain critical thinking and genuine empathy in our increasingly automated world. We are in a part where I'd like to involve my global view of topics. This comes from my PhD. For example, if we conduct research in some countries from what we call global north and global south. We can see that examples from India, China, UK, USA and North African countries. We have to see one by one what's IQ-driven ideas 
and emerging EQ focus in AI era. How can we combine this? How are these countries performing? The first example is the USA. We have to rely on the driven finance. Research conducted by AI, it's easier, it works non-stop. It gives you up-to-date while you're sleeping, AI is working for you, picking up data and preparing your report in the morning. It's more than what a human being can do by themselves. We have hours of work, we have to go home, we have families, etc. Is IQ higher than EQ in Wall Street, for example? To recruit in Wall Street, this is coming from the GP Morgan, for example, recruit via GPA or GRE scores. IQ tests remain higher in gold standards. They are the most important, unfortunately. Post-2008, GE's Leadership Institute added EQ training for executives, boosting retention by 25%. This is very important to consider. So, uh, you noticed empathy or collaboration valued more at work than test scores. Is there any change? Please write a comment and uh, let us know. When it comes to disparity, I'm always advocating this idea that disparity is not only global north-south. Within the same country, capital cities seem to have a similar high performance. But if you step out of capitals and big cities, you'll see discrepancies and huge differences. I live in the UK. In London, for example, at least 20% of the metrics are higher than other parts. Companies that focus uh, in inclusive leadership, for example, and this is claiming a rise, like in Berkeley, a 30% fewer team conflicts after using the principles of emotional intelligence in the workplace. Now we have a question for the UK viewers, does your employer value EQ workshops? Share your experience with us. For example, Aukau, National College Entrance Exam filters millions annually, pure IQ measure, driving intense high stake prep. In Beijing, Shanghai, students average 120 IQ points versus 100 in rural provinces. EQ in the countryside thrives through Confucian communal values, group harmony, emotional support networks, etc. We'll have the example of Alibaba. Integrates EQ coaching in management training. Pilot shows 40% boost in cross department trust. In India, we have top 0.1% via GE advanced schools producing high IQ engineers. The urban area is more developed in IQ. Bangalore startups of IQ workshops. Many villages rely on traditional council meetings. Tata Group includes EQ assessments for leadership roles. Internal survey shows 35% higher team morale. Now in Morocco and in Nigeria, put them together in this part. So education and IQ challenges. Both countries score below global IQ and education averages. In Morocco, 85 IQ, Nigeria, 80 IQ. Research gate in this. But I need you to tell me in the chats. Are you? We have the Moroccan souks, the Nigerian community gathering showcase high EQ through negotiation, social bonding skills, also social occasions like festivities and a huge warm atmosphere, which is above the average EQ in northern parts of the world. Inside the countries, if we compare Casablanca with Atlas villages, we'll see that IQ scores 
differently. Can you tell me about these differences? I'd like to hear from you. Now in Nigeria, Logos versus rural states, strong communal EQ drives, business resilience despite IQ resource gaps. I believe we have high IQs in these countries and high performances too. But uh, now we're leading to AI intelligence for the first time, non-human algorithms rival human IQ. In another video, I spoke of AI as a godlike figure present. You know, in different cultures, the belief in God or the creation of the idea of God, the concept of God, is based on an invisible entity. AI is above our intelligence. It's present, it's here, we see it. We created it. <laughs> Are you comfortable deferring decisions to AI? Do you think that if you walk in a company where you have your lawyer and AI agent, would you be comfortable? Our irreplaceable edge is EQ, and this is our strength. Emotions are what make human human and humane. AI lacks genuine empathy. EQ will separate future leaders from machines. Machines can measure data, humans measure meaning. Global South advantage? It's a question. Strong communal EQ networks in Morocco, Nigeria could buff AI-driven dislocation. Debate, will EQ Emotional intelligence, rich societies adapt better to AI disruption. At this point, I'd like to hear from you. I'd like to hear your comments and see your questions. This is our appointment every Monday, five o'clock live. I'm very happy to see you all. We have people watching. Thank you very much. This is Dr. Elena Karuba. Subscribe and follow our live videos, my website and new courses are coming. Thank you very much. Bye for now.